Hey, Shane. Yes, Vince? Have you seen Ready or Not? Uh, no. Well... Have now. Yep, I have seen. Ready or not, the 2019 film. The 2019 starring film. Samara Weaving, Queen. Literally, this is the movie. The first time I saw her in a movie, I think. Yeah. And like, what a first time to be introduced to an actor. I know, right? What? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh freaking uh, an electrifying performance. I thought she was phenomenal. I thought Legitimate, she was really, really legitimately. Legitimately, the, the the thing she does better than almost anyone is. You instantaneously like her. Yes. Not even necessarily like know her or anything like that, but you are immediately invested in her as like a personality. Right. You know what I mean? And then you learn to really like her as a character too. I completely agree. Yeah. And that is a testament to her performance as much as it is a testament to the writing, which I think is very strong. Yes. Um, This is a horror movie. Yes. About... (laughs) playing hide and seek play, which is such a fun premise it's a well it's a fun premise elevated to i think the peak of what it could be yes like to, it's absolute like the, the the writers really said like uh let's take this as far as we can and do it in as weird like the setup of the movie right when you first put you like i want to do a horror movie on hide and seek that's one thing, and that's a fun, snappy idea. Right. Because there is something scary about people hunting you. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but what they do that is so brilliant to me is that they find a character reason to set this up. This could have so easily been something like, uh, there's that movie from a few years ago, The Hunt. That's this weird like political satire thing where rich people hunt poor people. Right. It could have been this thing where someone's abducted and they wake up in the woods and they get told they have to hide. Could have been that. But they find a character reason, an emotional reason, to plop someone in this situation. Yeah. And I think that to the film's like of its many things that it does well, that is maybe the smartest fundamental decision it makes. Yeah. It's not just look, we need to chase her down and find her and she has to survive. It's more complex than that. Yeah. And were you expecting that going in? Like, what was your perception of the movie as much as, like, what did you know going in? I knew very little. Um, This was not a movie that I've heard talked about much. Which is something I want to talk about. Yeah. It's not something that I've heard talked about much, except for you. You're, like, one of the only people that I know who, like, who talks about it. I Um, champion this movie. you, You really, you really, really do. And, like, I knew it had something to do with, like, hide-and-seek. I mean, the name is Ready or Not. Um, So I knew it had something to do with um, hide-and-seek, and and that was basically about it. Like, I've seen, like, the poster or, like, some images of, like, Samara Weaving holding the big shotgun and having the bandolier. And that was, like, it. Did you realize she was in a wedding dress? Or when the movie started with the wedding, were you a little surprised? I can't remember what my thought was because I remember we've talked we talked about this like I don't know a year ago, six or eight months ago, somewhere in there, and I I can't like I I think I thought it was like like a period movie or something well, like that. No, no, it. Uh, I think it was. I I use this movie in a lot of my lookbooks, which is yeah. uh, part of a way to yes, pitch okay. a movie to sell the way you want a movie to look. I do. I use this movie a lot because I really like how this movie looks. Our viewing experience was a little weird. The a TV was a little bit off. Yeah, I couldn't. We couldn't figure out why. But like we, the 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 shadows were so green. It was. And very, I think that's there in the film. It, it is a little bit there for a thematic reason, I think. But it's um, the movie is very saturated. It's very yeah. it's very warm light versus very cool vibrant. light. Very vibrant. Um, which I like because it almost feels Victorian, like you said. Like the house is so classic yeah. and old yeah which is i love the production design of this movie this is the whole other thing yeah. we'll talk about it's so good but uh the i use it a lot in my my lookbooks and, and we had that conversation where you're like what is this old movie and i was like old it's ready or not dude it takes place in modern times you're like what yeah like i knew it was a modern movie but yeah i didn't, I, I could it, like because of the dress and like the house and then the gun like it all looks yeah 
it all looks very, uh, yeah, like you know, turn of the century or Victorian. Because yeah, it's like an old house. It's like yeah. it's old money. Literally, yeah, the very a much big part money. of this movie is old money and how people got it right yeah. taken to a very like heightened horror yeah. Satan worshiper uh, way. Spoilers, by the way, spoilers. spoilers uh, have spoilers. we not spoiled everything? <laughs> I know, but we I, we got to say it or else people will be pissed. All right, yeah. Like. Spoilers for this movie. Yeah. Um. The the setup premise. Spoilers. Samara Weaving is great. Oh man, Dude, that was the one thing. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sorry. No, she is spoilers. literally amazing. I'm in love with her. Yeah. Um. As well, you should be. As well, I should be. So the the setup of the movie being that she her character Grace is getting married to whatever his bucket into this family that and and this is another brilliant thing about this movie, right? That it's such a weird empire they have, a dominion they have, yeah. as, as he calls it in the movie. <laughs> Which is a good bit. They are a toy, or a, not a toy, sorry, a, um, a board game company that's branched into like other. It's all game oriented. They own yeah. um, sports franchises, but they're mostly known for their board game dominion. Yeah, it, which is so weird. Yeah, and quirky. It's just fun. It, it sets up a fun set of characters. Yeah. Which is the main thing I want to talk about here. Yeah. Make your side characters memorable. Yeah. Did you like that? Did you go in? Did you enjoy everyone? Did you... Every single individual like side character, every single character in this movie was uh, super distinct from each other. And, like, no, I thought all the all of the writing, all the character writing was super well done. Mm-hmm. I thought all the characters were like super fun and interesting and like well written and well realized um i i really like i i i liked it a lot like i i, I thought it was i thought it was a ton of fun it, it's like a shane blackian type deal right to make your like henchman memorable yeah that is something that he does uh quentin tarantino does that right just makes this random character in one scene one of the best parts of the movie yeah it, it which not enough people do. So many people would come in and go, okay, well we need the main antagonist of the movie to work. We need the protagonist to work and we need like one good comedic relief character. Yeah. And this movie forgoes that laziness yeah. and full sends it. Yeah. Right. You're with her, but you spend a lot of this movie with this family in various pairings. Yeah. A lot of it. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. No, I, I think, um, what they do, yeah, like when you mentioned with various pairings, like what they do with kind of like, you know, switching up the combinations of people in each of the scenes. Because because some too. of these the, the members of the family are in laws. They married into this yeah. weird cult of yeah. wealth. Yeah, and you kind of see the differences between how they react to these situations. Like, um, I can't remember the characters' names because I'm a piece of shit. Um, but uh, hold on, let me. I'm gonna open up Letterboxd and look at names. Damn it! And then I do, then I can actually talk about. Uh, like this is a plug for Letterboxd. They this don't sponsor a, us, but we really would like them we too. We would love it. Um, Charity is that her name? Um, her f- image is not showing up. Oh. Uh, the sister. Yeah, the sister. Yes. Um, <laughs> who's like <laughs> the drug addict? No, 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 no not, not not the sister. The, the oh no, uh, no, 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 the in law or the charity is Adam Brody's character's wife. Yeah. So she married in, and she's super bought in. She's like, oh, I'm gonna win. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like I just, more so than Adam Brody's character, yes. who is like the brother to the 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 groom in this movie, yeah. and who I think is like maybe the most interesting character in the right. movie. You yeah. know, like I think where. Where Grace, Samara Weaving's Grace, is the most likable, most engaging, and most like the character I connect to the most. Yeah. I think Adam Brody's character is this so full of like conflict, but he's also been broken down over the yeah. years of having to live with this. Yeah. But also not of- rebelling against it. He's like an alcoholic. He's giving her time to get away. He has that line. He's like, this doesn't end well for you, but I don't want to be the one to serve you up. Yeah. It's like his version of mercy where he doesn't literally want the blood on his hands. Yeah. It's so fascinating. I love his character. I think a lot of what they do with all those side characters give them like a lot of a lot more dimension than what a worse written movie would give them. Like for, for so many of them, they do have like complex needs and wishes specifically you're right charity yeah where they don't really explain her backstory you just get a hint that it was she did not have a good life right and she's not willing to go back on this. she is like the 
I mean, she is. Like, She's the NECA Grace. That was literally going to be my description. Yeah, it was like she is like the polar opposite, where it's like Grace won't do whatever it takes to you know like she's not she she's she, not she's marrying into this family for wholesome reasons yeah not for the money uh, she, because yeah. she loves this guy because she loves this guy and she grew up without a family yeah. and she wants a family and she says that very earnestly in yeah. the movie and i love that performance she gives because up until then she's been very poppy and fun or nervous and yeah. this feels like her kind of just like trying to genuinely impart emotions that are genuinely impart this key element of the tragedy of this movie. Yeah. Which is that she found a family and then they immediately tried to murder her to make good on a deal. This, this, these guys ancestors made with, with the devil, with the devil. <laughs> uh, like this, mo- the, 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 the heel turn that this movie turns in when it turns into freaking Rosemary's baby. People out of literally nowhere. chanting hail Satan. It's so good. It's so funny. I, I like, cause I was just like, Oh, this is, this is a fun, weird little thing. And then out of nowhere, they're literally trying to sacrifice her on a freaking pentagram. Table. She's like tied up. She has like a ritual gag on. Yeah. Like it's, it's so, they're all wearing like robes and hoods and they have a yeah. ceremonial dagger. And it's genuinely, genuinely you're like, what? is going on (laughs) because so so much of this movie. And I think I'm also very curious how you feel about this. Uh, Watching it. Did you ever question if it was real or not? What they, what this family, because the family is doing this because they have to, because a card was drawn from this box that was given to them. And if it says hide and seek, the person who draws it, who marries into the family, the rest of them have to hunt them down and sacrifice them to the person that did the spell that gave them the magic, the devil essentially during the movie where you ever like, it's not real. And that's going to be the twist. No, you always assumed it was real. I like, I don't know. Crazy people are nuts or not crazy people, rich people, rich people are crazy. Rich people are nuts. And so like, I would kind of fully just gave myself to it. There was never a point where I was like, Oh, they're going to do the thing where Surprise, we're not going to oh, murder sorry. you. That's not what I mean. What? What I mean is, do you think the magic is real? The supernatural oh. element of this movie. Did you sit there questioning whether or not it would, the, the turn oh. would happen? And it, and, and the, cause the, the premise is they don't kill her. They all die. Yeah. And they have to kill her to survive. Did yeah. you ever think the sun was going to come up and it, it was going to be like the fake out? Oh. They do. I wasn't even thinking about it. Oh, that's so honest. It, it is like a thing thing in this movie where he's like, maybe nothing happens. Well, what I honestly, what I thought was going to happen was that she was just going to off each of them individually. It was going to be a diehard. Yeah, I thought she was just going to like. Another fight thing her. I think this movie does well is that it is not a diehard. She doesn't just like systematically. Literally, they take out each other more than yeah. she takes them out. Accurate, which is great. Yeah, she punches that little bastard in the head, Dude, which which is so fulfilling. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> And then she takes out the the butler in the car. Yeah, the Terminator. The I mean, Terminator. The the term of butler, uh, the the butlinator. The butlinator found it. We found it, boys. I love it, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. Um, the butlinator, because um, that dude just would not die. He could just take. He could take a freaking axe to the head, and he'd just be like, Pfft. just keep on trucking. Just keep on keeping on. He's a very funny. Po- and again, even that character who should just be the Terminator has like weaknesses and quirks and yeah. personality. Yeah, it's like the guy could have just been somebody that got taken out midway through the movie, but they make it this weird thing where he is definitely the most capable of all of them. Yeah. Which I also love that none of these people are good at this. They're all like, yeah, uh, which is a great thing. They're like, none of us thought we were doing this tonight. Yeah. It's great. I mean, I mean, it also helps. I mean, like I also think it's funny. It's like, they're so willing to do the, do it traditionally until they're losing. And then they're like, fuck it. Then they break the rules. Yeah. And then they break their own rules, which I think is like, like so apropos of <laughs> they do that a lot like there's they, they do that they, they do that a couple times I mean, even with like character decisions and things like that they kind of like go back on their own which i like that's human that's real like we're we're complex human beings that can i you know as as uh sometimes spencer will be will point out um inconsistencies in 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 things that i say or things in ways that i feel and my my response is i was i, I contain multitudes <laughs> and i he think does. that's true like i'm, I'm looking I, at the multitudes now i i contain multitudes um and i think that's very true of how they wrote these characters and wrote this like story was that like it's complex people change their minds people 
go against their best interests. And I really appreciate that. Like, and, and I think that, and that again is to its credit that that makes these characters feel three dimensional. They aren't just mustache twirlingly evil the entire time or good hearted, good, nice people the entire time. It's like the good dude makes a bad choice and like, you know, ends up trying to sacrifice her and then makes the decision not to, you know what I mean? Like he, you know, these characters flip flop a tiny bit, but in a way that feels like natural and human. I really appreciate that. No, you're right. And they panic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the specifically the sister who's just a drug addict. Hilarious. They're continually cutting to her taking various drugs and snorting cocaine. It's <laughs> yeah. it's very good. It's and, the point where they're and they all, give her a gun. Like, yeah, literally. <laughs> so she shot the maid and then she shot the other oh, maid. She was my favorite too. The maid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good bit. This movie is like also really funny genuinely all it's they really every funny. time they cut to the the like the brother-in-law with the cross he's like how old is this thing yeah. he's sitting he's in the sitting bathroom the watching a video YouTube and video. he's like getting to know your crossbow oh it's so good it's so and, good it's like and the stupid asshole rich people are always the butt of every joke yeah well the in the freaking the the sister-in-law who married into it when she's like, I got you now. And she shoots her harpoon gun and it just flies into the <laughs> just, trees. It's just like she a like horrible shot. It. Oh, it's, I was also expecting a moment and I'm glad it didn't happen. I was expecting a moment where we're like, where are the real guns? And then they all have like AK 47s and bazookas. And yeah, they and make then, a point of it not to do and that. And then somehow she like fights and wins against, you know, like then yeah. she rambos it or whatever. I'm glad they didn't do that. Like, cause that would have been an easy thing to do. Yep. Cause like, yeah, they don't, they, it, it gets in, it, you know, it, the, the tension rises as we go on, but not through like, not to a point where it's like, I mean, it's all unbelievable cause it's a fun, silly premise, but to a point where it's like just outright stupid where it's like, how is she going to win against a freaking AK 47 and yeah. a, you know, an AR, they like, put her in a situation that she could plausibly make it through. Right. Not exactly fight through, but make it through. Yeah. I mean, she only kills, kills one person. Yeah. And the driver, I, the, the butler, I guess. Um, I feel like the wreck. The, well, know, no, no, the wreck. She causes the wreck more than I think she like beats C- him. Correct, right? And the only person she kills is the mom, which is a big story point in the yeah. movie, which is kind of what turns the her husband yeah. of one day, of 12 hours, yeah. against her. Which that may be my only gripe with the movie is I wish we spent more time with the husband. I agree with that. Like the, the one that his turn to the dark side. If we would have spent more time with him and his brother, I would be more okay with Correct, it. Correct, because we just spend more time with his brother, who is the one that ends up making the right decision and yeah. paying the price for it. Yeah. He dies because he helped her. Yeah. And that sucks because I do really think, like him. Do you think it's seeing his mom that turns him or seeing his brother that turns him? No, I think it's neither. I think it's the moment when he said he because that after he sees his mom, and she's holding the box, which is a great touch about this. Is the box has some of the mom's hair on it, which yeah. is gross, but I love it. Um, he sees them, and the moment is he kind of takes it. He's like, "Come here," and she steps back. Yeah, because she's now scared of him and 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 who he is and who he's yeah. connected to, and he kind of has this moment of like, "After this, you're not going to be with me." Yeah, and it becomes okay. petty. Right. It becomes like this fucking toxic masculine thing for yeah. him to not to, to turn and rejoin his family. He's like, well, if I can't have you, then fine, I'll take you and we'll all live happily ever after. And he turns on her, but then they won't, but then they won't, which, okay. Now let's just talk about this real quick. The last scene in the movie, when the sun comes up and they're all panicking, which, okay, first of all, her guttural scream Jeez. in that scene, we're, so we're like, she, he, he is the husband is about to stab her and kill her and she pulls and takes the knife in the shoulder yeah which is another thing we'll talk about but like does that jumps up rips it out of her own arm and just sc- like scream queen all the fucking <laughs> way dude literally so accurate. and she's just like holding the knife at them and backed into a corner and like has this like feral look in her eyes yeah where i'm like she's gonna kill all of them oh my god yeah. and then the sun comes up and the way they play this moment, I think, is brilliant. It's like a joke on a joke on a joke on a joke on a joke yeah. on a satisfying conclusion on a satisfying conclusion on a satisfying. Right. Continue where the freaking 
the the crazy aunt who's like a full blown cultist, the weirdest of all yeah. of them, the most satanist. Yeah, the mo- who is her? Who was her at yeah. the beginning of the movie? It sets up that she was the last person who had to lose their spouse because of this. Right. She's like everyone else is like. Oh, I guess it wasn't real. I guess we're fine. They're all looking at themselves. They didn't explode or light on fire or whatever. And she's the only one who's like, I failed you screaming at this chair where he sat, the Mr. Yeah. LaBille sat. And, <laughs> and then she pulls up the axe and she's like, oh, the girl still dies. She lifts it and then she explodes. Just absolutely. She just expl- pops. It just and pops. Gore yeah. everywhere. Great. Right? And then it's the best part about it is the reactions of every other family member. Right. Where like the brother in law then goes, I think she was right. <laughs> and then he blows up. And then the um because he's an idiot the whole time and he remains an idiot. And then the sister in law like begs for forgiveness. She's like, I take it all back. No, because she was selfishly in it. Yeah. And then she explodes. And the the one that's the worst, that's the is when the kids and their mom run yeah. out of the room and then three explosions off screen and gorgeous splatters in. But fuck those kids a little bit. No, fully agree. The entire time those kids are like, get her. Yeah. yeah. Sac- hail Satan sacrifice. Hail Satan no. sacrifice. A hundred percent. Screw those kids. Right? And the, the, the father-in-law blows up and dies where he's like trying to take back, or the father, her yeah. father-in-law blows up and dies because he's trying to take back the power. And by this point, she is just laughing. Yeah. She's covered in their blood, just like chuckling and giggling. And then when it's just her and her husband left, she like, she does the full like... <laughs> Like the snort, <laughs> yeah, laugh, the where snort. she like finds it so amusing that this is happening. Because frankly, who wouldn't in this situation? Hilarious. What she's been through, right? Does that, and then it's my favorite where he's like begging, he's like, "We're family. You made me better." Which, by the way, what I love about that is it was true. Yeah. At the beginning of the movie, right? Where like legitimately, and I think this is, I think this is completely true. I think if the, 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 the married couple, so her and him, if he had helped her survive, he would have lived. Yeah. I think cause he's now part of her family. Yeah. You know, I, I think the, and so my favorite part is she takes off the ring and she goes, I want a divorce and bounces the, the <laughs> thing off his chest. And then he explodes blood and she just like tasted drips in her mouth. Yeah. And she like wipes her lips, walks outside. The house is on fire. She sits down, takes out a cigarette. The, the cops show up and then like, what happened here? What happened to you? In-laws cut to black. So it good. is the most satisfying conclusion to such a wonderful romp of a movie. And I love it so much. It makes me so happy. Yeah, no, they ended it on a on a perfectly like perfectly camp. Like this movie's perfectly camp from beginning to end. Like it it's it, never afraid to step on a moment with a joke because it no. knows when it can't. You yeah. know what I mean? They have a perfect balance. Yeah. It never takes itself too seriously or or goes too far the other direction where it makes everything too much of a joke. The, yeah, movie mo- rock solid. Absolutely rock Top solid. Top down rock solid. Su- super, super, super uh, fun. Fun things about it. Uh, uh, the production design, like we mentioned, is just like decadent, like gr- disgusting display of wealth and also a beautiful, gorgeous house. I am positive that they just found an amazing house and 90% of, or 95% of what's in that house was already there. They, everything they, they had, put in had to be story, right? Yeah. They're like, we need a pool table or whatever. Yeah. Like basically everything, like anything that important to the story that they added, that they added specifically, everything else was already there. Like, I, I which like, like, because I mentioned this after the movie, and I wonder, and I, I, I wonder how you took it, because I was like, I, I looked up what the the budget was, and I think it was what like six point five million or something. Yeah, very like small budget. Very small budget, and I was like, I can see how it was only six point five million, but also like astounded at how good it is at the same time. Where it's just like, where it's like inspiring in a way, where it's like. You can make a, a super solid, super fun movie on a cheap budget. And like I have to imagine the, the majority of the money they spent were on, was on the actors. Yeah, the and actors. There's and no like, then, huge names on the cast, but there's like big yeah, enough to where it's like... Adam were, Brody, is uh, he was kind of a star for a stretch. And yeah, Andy he's, he's, had, he's had a big resurgence lately. Yeah. Uh, Samara Weaving isn't like a mega star. This was... 
don't know about her first like leading role, but it's it's her first high profile yeah. leading role. Yeah. Uh, which astounds me because she is so she's a legitimately kind of a revelation. Yeah, like I think so within the horror community, she's found a lot. Uh, Grace, the character, found a lot of mainstream where we all freaking love her. Yeah. Um, along with names like Sydney Prescott of Scream fame. Yeah. And um, Jamie Lee Curtis. I can't. <laughs> why am I blanking? Oh no. Do you what? know from Halloween? Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah, what's her the character's name? Oh, I don't know. Just Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, just Jamie Lee Curtis. I like what's her Halloween. Name in the movie? Sorry. My I'm I'm fully blanking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. No, don't look it up. I'll think of it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the game um, is him trying to remember that single name. Yes. Uh so it, I am a little bit astounded that no one talks about this movie. Yeah. It looks really good. It looks great. The performances are great. Great. And everyone who cuz we talked about this a little bit in the last episode with Barbarian, where word of mouth has done a ton for that movie. Yeah. where And I think that's kind of common of the horror genre where like sure. people are like, oh, wait, that one's good. Okay, I'll go see it. When this movie came out, I remember people being like, it's really good. And yeah. I tried to go see it and it, I missed it by like two days. Damn. I was really bummed. Damn. So I didn't even get to see it in the theater. So I'm part of the problem here. It's crazy to me and I'm curious how you feel about it. Like with your not quite as thorough horror knowledge you trying to say that you're a horror baby <laughs> <laughs> i fully admit i like i even think i, I said you mentioned it yeah. on the on the first episode i yeah I, I fully admit my uh my horror my lack of horror knowledge i i, I know i know a little some some i've seen some horror movies but definitely not to the to the same degree but like does it surprise you that no one really talks about this yeah like no, genuinely, I think, it's super, super, I think it super should good. be like a spooky classic. It should be yeah. a slasher classic. Yeah, I think and it's I, a ton of fun. I can't figure out why it's not. Yeah, I mean, like, like all of my mutuals on on Letterbox. Once again, please sponsor us. Almost all of them gave it like a four plus. Like, there's a couple of of lower scores, but basically everybody gave it four or four and a half. That I know because it's it's again we I there are times when you watch a movie and you just love to watch a fundamentally sound movie. Yeah. And this is a fundamentally sound movie on top of also being really twisty and turny and yeah. kind of subversive of what you think. Like, I think there's a bunch of different ways to take a lot of this movie, right? Where like the first act, you could really kind of believe that the, the person she's marrying will turn on her. So it could be a twist when he helps her for a while. Yeah. It's a twist when he ends up turning on her. It's yeah. a twist when the brother helps her. It's a, I don't know, man. It's like, it feels like there's a lot going on under the surface of all of this from a like script storytelling standpoint. Mm-hmm. But it's also not pretentious in any way. It is no. having like them in playing no the record while she hides. Yeah, and it's like great. this great fun and it playing at the end yes. when the house is burning down. Yeah. It's so good and fun and accessible. Yeah. Like, yes, it's rated R and it's a pretty hard R. There's a lot of language. Yeah. There's no like nudity in it. There's a lot of language. And this is the uh, another thing I want to really talk about. I'm curious how you feel. I'm more, um, <laughs> I'm more into like blood, guts, violence than you are. It was um, just that one. It was just that one. The nail. It when was her, the nail. She gets shot in the hand and you can see through the hand and then she, to, to keep from falling after Ugh. the ladder breaks, her hand slams down on Ugh. this like, this nail and she's, it's crazy. Ugh. Of all the, of all the one, like, it, well, you, mean, you kind of, super effective. You like kind of cringed a little bit um, when she's crawling her way through the fence and there's that close up of her back getting shredded. Did I? Yeah, that one didn't, that one definitely didn't bother me as much as the nail did. Um, yeah, because it's like... Oh, the nail's the worst. Put a nail in a movie, a, a quiet it. place. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's just going to um, get you. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Friggin' uh, uh, Home Alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is really like a tried and true method. <laughs> it works, man. A good old nail in the hand. A nail in the hand is worth two in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, Damn, dude. That was the best thing I've ever said. Uh, Uh, All right. Anyway, I love this because she, like the character from Barbarian, 
there is this like sense at the end where you're just screaming at the TV to be like, win. Yes. You root for them so much. And I think that's super important in a movie like this where it's like one versus a bunch, you know, you like, you, you not only want them to win from like a plot because you want the, you want the character to get the revenge or whatever it is. The, you like this person as a person. You yeah. feel connected to them. You feel connected to their struggle. And you want them to survive. And you want the asshole villains to uh, explode. And you get both. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and eat the rich. I mean, yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. There's nothing left of them. They blew up. Fair. Unless you want soup. You know? <laughs> oh, God. I'll just, get, I'll just get a straw. I love that. <laughs> but th- that's part of what I love is because. I think if the movie took it easier on her, it wouldn't be as effective. Yeah, no, she Jackie Chan chans her way through this movie. You know, and the way that Jackie Chan always gets his ass kicked in every movie, which I love. Like, that's one of my favorite aspects of a lot of uh, Jackie Chan movies. Like, he gets his ass kicked. Yeah, we, he, isn't, he isn't this infallible, you know, killing machine. No, he gets his ass kicked and he just happens to like, he still wins in the end. We talked about in the Fast and Furious one, specifically Hobbs and Shaw, where it's not fun to watch two invincible people fight two invincible people. Yeah. It's like, I like to see my character get punched in the face and see that it hurts them. Yes. You know what I mean? Like her getting back up in some of these situations, I'd be like, if you gave up right now, I would totally get it. Yeah, no kidding. Like I would not be like bad character. I'd be like, yeah, no, I would have given up it's, a long time ago. She's, he's literally, she's get, being held down. He has a knife above her saying, hail Satan, about to slam it into her chest. Looking into the eyes of the person she just married yeah. also. Like, not only is it a physical thing where I'm like, I would have given up. Yeah. But it's also an emotional thing. Yeah, 12 hours ago they got married. And, like, he's about to stab her in the chest. And she still finds a way to win. She fights through it. She t- it it's not easy. No. It's, it, it is not a free smart. She has no. to take a knife to the shoulder. Yeah get up and knows she still has to fight her way out of it. Yeah. And she's going to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, it's stuff like that that endears you to a character. And I, it's so often lost in horror movies. It's part of what I love about like the scream movies, which I know you haven't seen, but like part of the fun of it is the reverse of this where Ghostface gets the shit kicked out of him in every single movie. Yeah. And you love to Spoilers. see it. It's not a spoiler for a, the best running gag in horror. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, the most famous part of those movies. I love that. I love that they take their protagonist and don't give her an easy. It's no. that it's the screenwriting principle, right? Is your character a little sad or is your character devastated? Right. Which one do we want to see? Do I want to see the movie where the character gets their heart broken a little or do I want to see them where they never believe they'll love again? Yeah. It Everything. And this is also like, this is not taking subtlety into account. This is just from a like, when I'm writing it, when I'm watching it, it the stakes of the characters need to feel massive, yeah. right? What are the stakes of this outside of this one scenario? One person dies. Yeah. And a family gets to continue being rich. Yeah. That's yeah. what would happen. Versus for her, it, it is life ending for her yeah. and also emotionally devastating that this is happening to her. Yeah. The family she finally got. The yeah. story doesn't just skip that part of the movie. It is a through line throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Credit to them for that. I agree. Because they could have just cashed in the check of the funny premise of... Yeah. What if hide and seek was dangerous? Yeah. And they didn't. Which is a fun premise. Which is a very fun premise. But they didn't they, half ass it. They didn't. And I, I think that is honestly my lesson, right? Uh, the half assed version of this movie would still probably be entertaining. It would be fun. But it wouldn't would be good. It would be like a fun, whatever, like forgettable movie. And yeah. this movie is not forgettable. No. The side character, even the maid, right? The maid that she finds in like the. Yeah. In the, the like. The um, dumb waiter. The dumb waiter. Thank you. The dumb waiter. I who, think it's a very smart waiter, but whatever. Uh, he, he, well, I mean, you see, it brings food up and down the thing. Uh, Shane's got jokes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. That character makes a decision. That yeah. character isn't just killed, right? No. She's like, I don't know what's going on. I, I just whatever. Blah 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 blah. And she's like, No, they're after you. You just go out. You're fine. And so she goes. She's over here, right? She gives her up and dies for it. Yeah. Like they make that interaction memorable instead of just like having this person floating around the house. Yeah. It's great. 
the the second maid that dies too that gets the like the arrow in the mouth yeah um where she's like they're trying to have the conversation she's just <laughs> and she's like and then she gets her head cut off yeah. but it, it's stuff like that where it's they, they go what is the thing no one would expect right now right and they do it it's it's the scene works yeah all the information is there everything is there how do we take it one step further yeah how do we top this one tiny bit the brother-in-law having a whole through line of these jokes of hating the fact that he has a crossbow and being like hey we the in-laws at what point do we cut and run am i yeah. right it's, <laughs> hey it's i don't like, know why he became a mafioso uh, i don't hey, know what the in-laws <laughs> eh? what but, time do we go to freaking frizzoli's yeah. later <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Come on, I love doing it. But it's it's that kind of thing. It's yeah. taking every scene, every moment, and every character, finding out who they are yeah. emotionally, what they need to do, and what they need to fulfill. Yeah. And finding every time they can top it a little bit. You know, just turn up the dial. This one goes to 11. Yeah. This <laughs> movie goes to 11. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, like... She just got shot in the hand, and then she f- uh, punches the kid in the face and falls into a pit of sacrificial goats. Of and de- uh, people. Of, of dead sacrificial goats and people. Greatness. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. I love it. It's gross. Yeah. And then you have to watch her climb out. She could just climb out, yeah. and then her hand could be hit the nail, right? Uh, Sorry, he's making a face. Uh, oh, no. Shane is passing out. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's it could just be her climbing out, and then she doesn't realize, and she slams her hand there. Instead, what the movie does is it goes, oh, you know what would be a pretty good moment? If the ladder starts breaking, and so she has to make a choice yeah. to slam her hand on top of it. Yeah. That's the brilliance of it. Yeah. Is that it's a character making a decision, and a decision they have to make to survive, and it hurts and costs her something. The human heart in conflict with itself. There it is. Love you know it. what I mean? It's, it's one of my brilliant. favorite. I'm pretty sure George R. R. Martin said that. Um, about about writing, there's the only thing worth writing about is the f- the human heart in conflict with himself, and I and I love that, and I yeah. think that's uh, incredibly accurate. So much of this movie is like, is the human heart in conflict with itself? Literally, somebody fighting family for the family they chose. Yeah, you know, it's it's that type of thing. Her character getting the thing, and the thing she wants more than anything is gonna kill her. Yes, which is this family to belong to, yep. and they're gonna murder. I, there's this great line early on where where um, the sister in law, Adam Brody's wife, Charity, is 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 essentially she's like she'll never be one of us. And Adam Brody in his drunken way is like, oh yes, dear, because she has a soul. Yes, and like I like this just like good person that she is. You know, she's yeah. not not complex, but she's just good. She's just yeah. a good person. Uh, the evolution of her costume is also really great. fun. They they never may have. A, there's a million times where she could have changed. Yeah, but they commit to that wedding yeah, dress, right? Do. Where she's like walking at the yellow Converse are such a fun choice. Yeah, right. Like she changes shoes and is walking and realizing she has to like rip up the wedding dress and she rips up and there's a moment where she like looks at herself in the mirror and she just goes fuck and then yeah. walks off <laughs> it's so she's good. hilarious so good another thing i love is all those moments of her laughing at the end when they're all exploding when the um she's almost away and this car drives up and he's like get out of the fucking road and she's like fucking rich people and then she just goes off yeah. screaming into the night about how like so small his dick is and how she fucking hates him like it's stuff like that that just escalates a movie and i love that do you have any lessons anything yeah, lessons favorite moments let's just kind of like praise this movie a little bit if you're not if you can't tell i love this dearly and i hope you do too um i couldn't tell you couldn't tell i liked yeah. oh okay we gotta start over yeah like i think it's just like a testament to what you can do if you're smart with your budget, like what you can do with it, like six and a half million. And that the movie looks great. Um, all the performances are great. Like there's like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel cheap. Mm -hmm. And yet like, I mean like having some idea of, of, you know, the behind the scenes of, of filmmaking, I can like see where they cut corners, but you never feel it. You know what I mean? Like just as like a filmmaker, I'm like, Oh, that's a smart way to do that because, like, that definitely saved them some money. You know what I mean? Like, and I love that. I love that idea of like using every penny of your budget to make it as as good as possible. Yeah. As as uh, as you know, to really to really stretch your stretch your dollar. Love it. I love it. It, it. For some reason, that made me think of the moment when she runs out of the house and she stops and has the like the flashes back to the wedding. 
Yeah. And then she runs back out of up the aisle. You yeah. know what I mean? That's another weird thing where it's like, we had that set up, leave it up and we'll turn it into a moment. Yeah. That, but also I, I love that also makes her a smart character where you're like, she's going to turn around and, oh no, she's running away. No, she's yes, running. she's running yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, which is wonderful. Yeah. There was, and that was like, that was one thing that I thought was funny. I was like, man, they really just let her get all the way out. Mm-hmm. I was like, how they have to bring her back in. How are they going to bring her back into this house? They find and a way they, to do it. I was like, and they found a way to do it. I thought that was a fun decision. Cause it's like, I feel like it would have been easy to keep her in the house of horrors the entire time. Yeah. Which like, is, that's the premise of the movie, right? The containedness yeah. of it. And they're so good at what they're doing. They go, Hey, you know how this whole thing is set in a house? What if like, what if she a out? big portion of it wasn't. Yeah, what did she actually? It's again, it's that out? reversal. It's if a character's losing the whole time, we stop caring because it's like she's just gonna lose. If a character's winning the whole time, we stop caring because they're not struggling. This finds peaks and valleys, yes. victories and losses. Yeah, and it's so again the idea of finding the moment of like, okay, she's win. It feels like they were writing and they were like, she's winning too much. Like, like how does this change? And the guy's like, well, that butler is really smart and crazy. Why wouldn't he go get her? And yeah. then they write his story of getting her. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's so brilliant on their part. Yeah. I love this movie, dude. I can tell. I can't understand. I cannot understand why more people haven't seen it. No, I agree with that completely. I, I, I it's, it is like, I mean, like I said, like uh, the people that I know on, you know, my mutuals on letterbox to have seen it all gave it super high scores. Like it's got, uh, yeah, it, it's, it'll be, a, it's, if it isn't, currently considered a cult classic it will be one it better be. i mean yeah. it's it's already a yearly rewatch for me i yeah. watch it every every october i when love did this come out uh 19, 20, 2019. 2019 i watched it twice the first year i saw it, which was 2020 because i bought the blu-ray and then i watched it and then i watched it again with a friend watched it again 2021 with some other people i showed it to them was this the one that you said they didn't have a good time watching it Oh yeah, we watched it with uh, some people. One of my my one of my my cousin really liked it, and my cousin's friend who watched it with us was not into it because it was so violent, and he, uh, he was like he's uncomfortable with it. No, I was into it. Like I'm yeah, like I'm not like a huge fan of like uber violence, but I think this like super threads the needle of like fun violence. Yes, yes, you know it, it's well because it's not just gratuitous. Uh, I talked about this with a friend once Halloween, which I know you haven't really seen any of those, No, but there's, there's Halloween, the original John Carpenter Carpenter movie. And then there's Halloween, the Rob zombie remake. What John Carpenter understands about Michael Myers is that he's scary, not because he's ripping kids heads off. He's scary because he's like evil incarnate. Yeah. He doesn't, it, those movies are shockingly, uh, the, the first one, the first one, shockingly unviolent. Yeah. Because you watch Halloween 2018 or whatever it is, the remake series or the 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 sequel series, yeah, uh, Zeus, <laughs> so the timeline. <laughs> um, you watch those and it's like hyper violent, but half the time you're like, I don't care because these are characters I don't even know or care about. You're watching someone in Ready or Not. You're watching someone you like, love, and care about. Go through the ringer, dude, yeah. and it, it that's what makes it work is nothing feels like it doesn't serve a purpose right. whether it be emotional or um logistical or whatever yep. you know we need her to be limping she gets hurt we need her to not be able to use her arm she whatever it is yeah they make it um we need an excuse for her costume to deteriorate more right yeah so she gets shot in the hand she's a rip off her sleeve and tie up her hand with yeah. it it's the, everything has a purpose whether it's big or small whether it's like for the plot or just for the character i think that's brilliant yeah final thoughts on this movie general out there specific moment whatever you have to say okay question yeah so at the end all of them explode yeah all of them go become mist um and then out of nowhere the like fire yeah, catches yeah. and you see you see him nod at her and you see him nod at her what 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 was that what's your interpretation I mean, I, do you think he wanted them to die? Yes. Why? Here's the thing. I don't have an answer for you. Yeah. Not a... Inte- Which I think is fun. Not an intellectual one. Yeah. My response to this would be the gift he gave them was that they had to kill their loved ones and force their family members to watch it happen all in yeah. the pursuit of money. Yeah. Which I think any moral person yeah. would find disgusting. Yeah. Now, we don't really know if he was a moral person because he had this kind of magic and gave it to them. Yeah. But he cursed them with this. Yeah. I don't necessarily think... Maybe not. He Maybe he didn't want her to win. Maybe he just went, 
good job. Yeah. He's like, you did it. You did what no one else could. Because that's, in my opinion, that that was what the story was, yeah. right? I mean, you it, got, I mean, literally their entire line was destroyed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and the, the other funny, he, I, she was I the, just she now was thought the, of this. She was Im, the one to break the curse. Imagine all the cousins and extended family just like, hey, honey, what do you want? <laughs> not even at the house, they're just <laughs> popping. That's, oh, that's a great thought. I want to watch that montage. That's very funny. Um, no, so yeah, I don't know. I, to me, it just always read, because also her response to it is, again, she's laughing before this and throwing the ring at him. He's blowing, she just goes, fuck. Yeah. And then she leaves the house, right? Like, in, in her brain, she's so over it. Like that moment is almost more for the audience and more for her for her to do the yeah. one perfect thing. Like that moment is perfect, yeah. but it, it it is. I think he wanted her to win, or yeah. at least is like, damn, you did it, good job. Yeah. My only other last thought is, oh look, I hate cigarettes. They're bad. They're a scourge. But damn it, people look cool smoking. They really do. Damn it, people specifically look cool in movies. Specifically in movies, you catch people smoking in real life. It's not oh, as cool. Oh yeah, no, I am. I'm one of those annoying people. Where not even annoying. Screw them. They're the ones smoking. Um, that uh, if uh, I think Spencer does, uh, if they like blow smoke even remotely near me, I will like as loud as possible. Be like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what is that? I've seen him do it. <laughs> yeah, people. If you smoke, uh, stop smoking. You're only hurting yourself and everyone around you. Who thought that this would become a truth ad? <laughs> <laughs> truth sponsor us. Uh, but. Movie smoking is okay. sexy so, as hell. Movie smoking is cool. <laughs> um, Damn it. My final my final thought is Samara Weaving is a revelation and needs to be in more stuff. Samara Weaving Give me supremacy. a movie with Samara Weaving and Florence Pugh and I wouldn't be able to make it through without passing out. This is true. <laughs> this is true. You would drop down to one knee, pull out a ring that I didn't know you purchased and yeah. <laughs> hold it up to the screen and I'd be like, Spencer, that's not how it works. And you'd say, I don't care. I'm Ma- doing it. Maybe the movie will marry me. <laughs> um <laughs> That's shockingly accurate, I think. I would bust a like glass on my sh- ankle or something with an emergency ring and just <laughs> emergency present it. Engagement ring. Uh, that's amazing and sadly very accurate. Some Samarin Samor Samorance. That's their that's their <laughs> celebrity ship name is S- Samorance. Samorance. It's bad. I'm it's sorry. bad. Okay, we're moving yeah. on. It um, wasn't as good as what what was it earlier? Uh, Butlinator. But nothing, nothing's ever. ever Butlinator is perfect. Nothing's ever going to. We should get shirts made. <laughs> we should get shirts made. That say merch, the Butlinator merch coming soon. <laughs> Don't, uh, that's leave, not true. <laughs> leave, leave it. If, upvote down in the comments if you want Butlinator merch. Yeah, if our one audience member upvotes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, 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 all right. Text now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> text your votes now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's live. Yeah, <laughs> like this American Idol. Yes. <laughs> this fell off the rails really quickly. Yeah, no kidding. Um, okay. You got a B segment. Yeah. I've got a couple. This is this is more Q&A than it is like a game. Um, but I do. I have, I've got a couple of questions that I think are super fun. Um, number one, what classic like childhood game or board game would you turn in? would you turn make deadly what what deadly version just like this movie makes um hide and seek deadly what classic childhood game or or board game would you make deadly i i'll get my real answer i'll go into in a sec my joke answers hungry hungry hippo (laughs) (laughs) dude i love it that's a great answer (laughs) it's like that movie crawl but with hippos (laughs) operation (laughs) Etch a sketch. I feel like that's just the human centipede. No, that's just a procedure. Yeah. <laughs> that's just somebody who isn't a doctor making incisions and trying to do surgery. That's not that's, 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 Operation is a really stupid. That's a really it, funny. It's a it's a hungry, hungry hippo is a great one. Um, okay. My, 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 I don't know if this is a classic game. So you know what Marco Polo is. Yeah. Right in the pool. Like the pool game? Typically yeah. the pool where one person has their eyes closed and they have to find you in the pool. Yeah. We did that on a playground. <laughs> oh, that's fun. It's called Gravity Tag. <laughs> so one person has their eyes closed uh-huh. and they are climbing on <laughs> the playground yeah. with everyone else like climbing and hiding and all they can go is Marco, Polo. But if your feet are on the ground and they yell Gravity Tag, you're it. 
So you have to try your damnedest to climb around. Only one person has their eyes closed. You're looking at me like okay. this. Is, yeah, one person. This, this is nuts. It's an insane game. I can't believe me and my friends didn't die. Yeah. Uh, that. I want that. I want Love. that game, but they're like on a skyscraper that if he yeah. yells it, they fall. But if he touches them, they die. Yeah. Right. So you have to like that. I want gravity tech. <laughs> Sorry. I just thought of an answer and it's not funny. It's too real. <laughs> you you got to say it. Okay, I'm going to say it. Uh, the board game pandemic. Okay, let's move on. Uh, damn, <laughs> damn, oh, I really, homie. really went there. <laughs> um, you mentioning that game just reminded me that I, I don't. The, the, it's literally just hide and seek. But uh, my 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 family and my close friends uh, in one summer they came over and spent a lot of time with us. And for some reason, we played hide and seek throughout our entire neighborhood. Oh, I've done that before, but we. We got nuts about it. Uh, first of all, we called it Seek and Destroy because we're really cool. In case you weren't, sh- and weren't weren't aware, and I don't know if you know this, I was super cool as a ten year old. Anyways, um, so we called it Seek and Destroy, and we literally had we printed off like map quest maps of the neighborhood and marked off which houses had dogs so we could avoid the barking and like we got nuts with it and it was super fun for the actual question i literally i came up with this question i don't think i have a good answer um like i do think the operation is a very funny answer but i don't know if that's like actually what i would like make a deadly version of i don't know um, etch a sketch is also a funny answer because it's not even a game. <laughs> Why would that work? <laughs> You're thinking, yeah, you know, they they every, just no every every mark you make um uh is on somebody else's body. <laughs> well, it's like it's like that moment in Harry Potter. Yeah, where they're where, writing. Yeah. Uh, the, I'm a very bad boy. So they just did this with bodies, 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 right? Yeah. Where they take like mafia, the game, they heighten it where you have to, there's a hide and seek element and make it into a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, but there was a game we played where it was, there's two. So there's one where uh, we call it like submarine or shark or something mm-hmm. where everyone has to go into one room in the house on one side of the house. Yeah. One person and it dark, every light in the house is out mm-hmm. at night. One person goes, and you have to be brave enough to make it from that spot of the house to the front door mm-hmm. and touch the front door and make it back. And they just have to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So a lot of the times, like one time I remember I just sat somewhere where they couldn't see me, like in another room, and they, I heard them all coming out freaking out because they were wondering where I was. We would do stuff like that. That's just a That's fun, super fun. That's a fun game. The any, other any hidden role game I think would be good. Yeah. Any hidden role game would be super correct. Solid. Like, the other one was another one we, we did it at night. It was like reverse hide and seek. Where you had to hide, but when they found you, they hid with you. And so it would be like eight people playing uh, and one after another wild. there's more people hiding in the space right i think there's like a fun twisted like supernatural moment where like you're drawn to the place and you yeah. can't leave once you're there yeah. and it becomes this like crazy insane thing i think that would be a fun spooky Super movie fun okay question number two um and we can make we can discuss this exactly how, how we want to discuss this a would you rather be in or would you rather play Deadly hide and seek or Jumanji? Which would you rather play? Which version of Jumanji? Um, let's say OG. OG o- Robin Williams Jumanji. OG Jumanji. OG Jumanji. OG Jumanji. <sighs> versus like versus Ready or Not versus hide and seek. Okay, am seek. I fighting this version of the family? Let's go with yes, because I think I could kick a lot of their asses. Oh, 100 percent. I could beat them up. I think I could win this version of yeah. it. I'm not positive I could win Jumanji. Really? Do you have the evil spiders and okay, the stampedes and stuff? Here's my hot take. If y'all would just roll. If as y'all would just as go. Possible. Yeah, literally just pick up the dice, drop, pick, drop. Well, that's not drop, the rules. The drop. rules is the the effect of the the turn. You have to you have to wait for the effect to happen. Where is that a rule? It's the rule in any board game where you have to go to the spot, read the card. If if there's a if there's a card to yeah, read, but, it's but just that's the things card. Things show up. Yeah, but it's, it's not that. It's it, not. No, it's like survive the guy hunting you. You have to out. Like they could do it if they could, but if one of them gets shot in the face, game over. You can't go past their turn. But if I don't hot take nothing, you're wrong about this. I don't this. think that's true at all. I seriously think if they just picked up the dice and rolled them, 
if the next thing would show. That by the end, there'd be 60 dudes all in one room. But if, if you're fast <laughs> enough... Why did you turn it to John Mulaney? Hey, you'd be 60 <laughs> dudes, dudes all, all in, in one room. room. <laughs> <laughs> I turn it to Christopher Walken meets, meets John, John Mulaney. Mulaney meets some mafioso. I um, don't agree with you on this. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. Okay. Um, okay, so like... <clears throat> No, I couldn't. Would, I couldn't win Jumanji. I could. I there's a feasible. Think, no, there's a feasible chance I could beat beat all these people in this in this situation. You seriously think you'd have a better chance beating that than, than beating fighting Jumanji? a lion? Yes, I do. You you're faster. Just run. than a lion? Yeah, just run. I am not faster than a lion. You're a you're you're. I was about to say you're a gazelle, but they died lions all hey, the time. Siri. How fast can lions run? Sorry to everybody who's listening to this on their speakers. Uh, Spencer is a bad person. Max speed is 50.3 miles per hour for a lion. Come on, you can run faster. I, I, I categorically I, cannot. I know I can. No, you can't. <laughs> I, all I'm saying is I roll that ri- lion. By the time it okay, goes look, back to me, the lion has my head okay. in its mouth. All right. Well, pick your, pick your team then. Who's your, who's your Jumanji what team? What I'm saying is it doesn't matter. If I roll first... And it's what a, are you in an no, open no, 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 no. room? Listen, with ju- like listen. go into a place where you can hide from a lion. Lions don't have hands. Listen to they me. They can't deal with doorknobs. Listen to me. I roll. Let's say this then. I roll. It's lion. Lion pops up in the house somewhere. Doors open. You roll. It's um spiders. Spiders start crawling around. Next person rolls. It's whatever. That thing pops up. By the time it's back to me, if I roll anything, we're surrounded. Just pick up and move then. Damn. That's what they tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> you just broke your own argument. But, it, but like they could no. be in a car no, I just and won. put it in the front seat. And then we'll each of okay, but what I'm saying, pick your team then. Who freaking Rambo? You? <laughs> I didn't know I could pick I those liter- guys. I literally freaking just I- said pick your team. You didn't even make an. Uh, you did. You, you know what? Now you can't. No, now no, you no. have to pick real people. All I right, re- you. I, I want you to die <laughs> with me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. Like, look, okay. Who are you? Who's your movie? Who's your Who's your movie team? Uh, Superman. All right. No, 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 no. Superman. All right, you are the worst. I want Superman. I want. I want. I want the <laughs> Butlinator. <He would, laughs> the Butlinator alone no, would win I, this. I want Superman. I want Scooby Doo. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Yeah, they would all go for him first. He makes Ruby. too much noise. Uh, yeah, one spider shows no, up. No, no, I, I, I want. Superman? I want Sam and Dean Winchester from Supernatural. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I want Give me non non superhuman like give me real human. Yeah, but then beings. Rambo doesn't count either. Have you seen those okay, movies? He's well, not a human being. In Rambo one. I want the xenomorph, First but he's my word. friend. <laughs> <laughs> but he's on my side. I want the predator. <laughs> Moving on. You're wrong about this. No, I could win Jumanji so easy. You're just a baby. You're just, you just get arachnophobia. You would lose. Have you seen that movie? Have you seen arachnophobia? No. It's a pretty good movie. But I, I'm saying there's, you know, you know, there's a thing called arachnophobia in real life, right? No, no, no. I only know about movies. I don't know about real life. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, yeah, no, I think I could win. I, I think I could. I think I have a better shot at Jumanji than I do Ready or Not. Yeah, but did you see? They're all a bunch of morons. I agree. I know, but here's the thing: if I got one of their weapons, I think it's my time. You know what I mean? Fair. Like that's even the harpoon gun. I would handle better than they could handle any of those things. Fair. Like that's the problem, and we know they can't shoot. I could, I could take the stupid uh, Demon, whatever family. I could beat him. I could beat him. All right. I think I'm taking Jumanji. You can take Jumanji. I think you'll have a more fun time because you're going to go on an adventure. I'm going to fight ooh, for the, my life. The monkeys are so scary. You roll monkey. Monkey walks up, takes the game. How are you going to roll next? I'm not an idiot, and I don't let them take it. <laughs> There's 50 of them. And, and, and all you have to go is, ooh, ooh ah, ah, banana, and then they're gone. It's not true. Oh, my God. You are you you are wrong about this. I would win a Jumanji in like five minutes flat. We're if watching just, Jumanji tonight. I'm gonna make you watch Jumanji. Yeah, and you're gonna see. Oh wow! It's because they just took so much time every time. No, anytime anything showed up, they were like, "All right, let's stop." Okay, let me ask. Let me let me ask you minutes. this. Let me ask you this. He rolls the dice. We're still talking about this, and I'm sorry, but I'm not going to let this go. Because you're wrong. He rolls the dice. It says stampede. Four seconds later, he goes, do you hear that? 
Five seconds after that, boom, Stampede okay. comes running through the house. You hear Stampede. Grab the thing. <clears throat> move. Sit down with the board game in your hand instead of letting a freaking pelican come and steal it. I think it. the whole point of the board game is it's supposed to make it hard for you to win. So the stampede comes to you. And it would be so easy if they weren't stupid children. I think the point is if that they, they are just, stupid. Oh if my they God. would just hold on to the board. That's like half of this movie is them trying to catch the board. If they would just hold on to it. First of all. Instead of letting I'm, it go at every chance I'm they got. I'm detecting hate for the classic movie Jumanji. So you can me. cool your shit, don't, sir. Don't get okay, me wrong. Okay, I what like about Zathura? You. Same principle apply? Did you just twist the little knob a bunch? Yeah. No, it literally ejects a card and you're magically in space. All right, I think Zathura is different. I oh my Zathura god, I don't want to talk. Which, by the way, hold up. By the way, Zathura, that movie slaps. That movie slaps. I like that movie. That movie slaps. Kristen Stewart in her best role. Have you seen Twilight? I mean, <laughs> I have seen Twilight. I stand by. I I I chose my words very carefully. All right, I'm you, just kidding. You can die on this. Obviously, hill. I'm kidding. Spencer, her best performance is Spencer. Well, We're moving the, on. That's the real. Do you answer. have a third question? <laughs> No, it was just the two. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry for that 10-minute okay, tirade. Here's my third question. Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> <laughs> you made me this way, and you know that. Yeah. Um, I made okay. you better. I made you stronger. All right. We're going <laughs> to... It's a barn burner. I'm into it. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. Recommendations. Okay. Recommendations. You so, go first, because I, I need to think of one. <laughs> We prepare for this podcast. Um, he prepares for this podcast. <laughs> obviously, 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 obviously. Watch Ready or Not. Yeah. If you got here and now you're going to go, I'm going to go watch it. You kind of ruined it for yourself. Yeah. This movie rules. Samara Weaving rules. I'm going to throw out another Samara Weaving movie. Go for it. Just uh, as one of my two recommendations. The fun one is Bill and Ted Face the Music. She uh -huh. plays uh, Bill's daughter. Love and it. she is so bought into that world and having such a good time. I love that. That those movies are like wonderful. Yeah. Um, check out that's the third one. So watch the first two, then watch that one. We'll have to make an episode out of those. Uh, it's on my list. Yeah. <laughs> cause I should, would we do all three or would we do, uh, we would do all three. Oh, that'd be fun. I'm uh, cause I, I, I always joke you, you adore Paddington cause it makes you feel good. Dude. I always joke that Bill and Ted's is my version of that. I love it. Um, so that uh, so other, stay tuned stay tuned in the future that. we don't know when it's on we, we don't know who when no if, if we have if we have enough people ask we will put it in the schedule that's the scary part of the podcast Ooh. i hate us i'm yeah, so do. done i'm done listening to myself <laughs> talk um no okay my my other fun answer is this is also going to be a podcast episode at some point but you talked a lot about low budget and doing something big with that. Yeah. The movie It Follows is a tiny budget with like minimal special effects and like a really weird, weird concept. Yeah. Done so incredibly well. Yeah. That I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. It is gen like literally when I watched it, I watched it with a friend and we would sit there and be like, so it was like this how it works and we would throw each other scenarios about the world building and mm -hmm. like joking not making fun of it we liked the movie we were just genuinely curious we would talk about it and then it would get to a scary sequence and him and I would both shut up and like curl our arms and get really scared <laughs> uh, it follows rules and if you want another like low budget horror movie that does so much with its premise that's the movie you should watch love it your recommendations good sir um, I'm literally gonna steal something that we said earlier in this episode Zathura. I think that movie is a bucket of fun. Like, I don't think that movie gets enough. I mean, freaking Dax Shepard is a, a bamf. I love that dude. Um, and I, I love that movie. Movie's super fun, super All sweet. All the design stuff in it is so yeah, cool. Yeah, super. I, yeah, the, the like, yeah, the like mid century retro futurism uh, that that movie, that that movie has all over the place is great. I love it. Once Upon a Time. Uh, you and I were going to do a podcast over like director's filmographies or whatever. Right. And then we realized the, the, uh, the podcast blank check exists. Yeah. So we, bleh. um, shout out to blank check. That's another, our, our like test episodes to like do it. We did John Favreau. So you yeah. and I are both John Favreau stands just, through John and Fa through uh, to a certain extent. The lion King excluded. <laughs> yeah. I think his, his later decisions, the Mandalorian's cool. Mandalorian's cool. The Mandalorian's really cool. Yeah. If not like 
a little lacking in story stuff. Right. Um, I have no. some complaints, but it's it's. Yeah, good. I still love John Favreau. Yeah. You know what I mean. Anyway, we both love John Favreau. Uh, Zathura rules. Zathura, um, and then like okay, I, the original Jumanji shreds, um, and uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. I think is like I really I saw the trailer for that movie when it came out, and I was like, really, are they doing this? And it's so much better than I ever thought it's it would be. It's weirdly a commentary on a lot of our problems with Dwayne Johnson. Literally. And, like, it's him playing the joke of being the invincible guy. Yeah. It, I also love this movie. I love Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. I think no. it's genuinely so I think, funny. I think... Jack um, Black is a revelation. In so... It. Oh, my God. I Just Jack... Just Jack Black. Shout just out to Jack, Jack Black. Just everything that Jack Black does and everything he will ever do. Uh, barring any uh, complaints uh, that happen in the future, if they're even remotely possible. Anyway, I, I don't want to. I don't. Uh, uh, it, this is going to end badly if he does anything bad in the future. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, I think I think two kind of like board game or like game movies. I think make a lot of sense to recommend for this one. And and those are those are some classic ones that I that I love love a lot. So I think those are probably my my recommendations for this week. Bet bet I love it. I'm so glad you liked this movie. Yeah, was I was so very nervous. I like, I almost called an audible and showed you. It follows. You instead. tried. You really tried. Because I was just like worried he wasn't gonna like it, and that was gonna hurt my feelings. Because um, <laughs> I love this movie. Tough, buddy. Because this is the wrong show. Ooh. If you're gonna no. <laughs> so, uh, watch Ready or Not. Watch The Thorough. Watch Jumanji. Watch um, It Follows or the Bill and Ted movies. Specifically, the one with Samara Weaving because she's amazing. Play Operation. Play Operation. Play on any a, of these games. On a real person. Debate with your friends if you could survive Ready or Not or Jumanji better. And you could survive uh, Jumanji. Everybody could. I am going to stab you. As long as you keep a good grip on the game. They sell <laughs> Jumanji board games at Target. We're going right now. All you have to do is hold on to the game. Okay, okay whatever. <laughs> uh, you have a whole bunch of stuff to watch. A yep. bunch of really cool stuff to watch. Yes. So go do that. Watch it. Or, I don't know. Don't. Live your life.